Hey everyone, today is Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. Welcome to the um, bi-weekly SMI community meeting. Uh, we have several really interesting agenda items today. Um, the link to the agenda is pasted in chat. Please add your name if you are an attendee um, and feel free to add discussion items to the, um, to the discussion items list. Um, and with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and kick it off. Uh, well, an overview of the agenda actually first. Um, we're gonna talk about the generic SMI controller uh, that Nick has been working on. Um, there's also an update on the Istio adapter on that. Um, Bridget has a call to edit the SMI CNCF annual, annual review. So we'll talk about that. Um, she also had an agenda item around, you know, how do we get our roadmap going? Um, how do we deal with compatibility between integrations? So I'll help facilitate that conversation since she's not here today. Um, there's a few other notes that she has. Uh, I have an item around um, traffic split and clarifications around what a root service can be. Uh, and then Michael is gonna lead us in the multi-cluster discussion. And then I'm gonna talk about the contributing guide for the spec. So we have a lot going on and I may, apologies, cut you off. Um, if I feel like we could maybe have a better discussion or a longer discussion offline about it or at the end of the meeting, if you wanna extend that. So just to help us uh, get through everything. Um, okay, with that, Nick, you wanna give us an update? What's going on? All right, uh, let me just find that button that makes my screen broadcastable to the interwebs. Oh, can uh, somebody enable screen sharing for me, please? Uh, yeah, let me figure out how to do that. Hmm, stop. I'm going to make you a co host and we will see if that works. I think, so. yeah. Uh, yes, there we go. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm going to caveat this with an apology because I, about 30 seconds ago, developed a migraine, so I can't actually see out of my right eye at the moment until that disappears, but um, we'll go through. Okay. So where I'm at with the the, um, the SMI SDK, the, the kind of the things that I've been working on recently, I haven't made many advancements in like things like adding additional specs to it because that's a known entity. The, the key thing that I'm interested in is how do you test it? How do you develop it? How do people contribute to, to the SDK? And, and ultimately, does it work? Like, is it is it possible to create something which is flexible enough? And, and I, I think the answer to all of that is, is yes. So the first thing around uh, the repo, what I've added to, to the repo is, um, is a well, I updated the readme the other day, There's which has got some instructions on it's very brief on how you can kind of create things, but also uh, instructions on building and developing locally and things like that. Um, and I also added a bunch of functional tests. So now not only are there unit tests, but um, there are functional tests which would follow the, the sort of Coop Builder um, Ginkgo specification, which I, I'm on the fence on, and I'd love to get people's comments on, on Ginkgo tests. Um, and also end-to-end -end tests, which checks the, the controller SDK against a real Kubernetes cluster. So we've got, we've got all of that. Um, it's working pretty good. Uh, I've been working on getting the development experience working pretty nice. So I'm using a tool called Shipyard, which allows you to create a uh, Docker, a Kubernetes cluster running inside a Docker. So you can develop everything locally. It'll install all of the bits and pieces and the Helm chart and everything that you need. And as an added bonus, what you can do is debug it because any of the webhook stuff is forwarded to your local machine. So I'll give you a quick demo of that. So I'm just running the controller. Controllers spinning up on my local machine, connecting up to my Kubernetes server and Docker. And let's go ahead and apply a configuration here, which is the V2 alpha traffic split example that I've got. So I've got some breakpoints uh, inside of the uh, the conversion code, just so that you can see like the the sort of the, the debugging approach of, of working with the SDK, which 
which is totally relevant, not just for the SDK, but for the implementation perspective as well. That, that was kind of like a, a clear game, hopefully. So I'm applying that. K apply examples, traffic split V2. You can see that the breakpoint has been hit. So this has hit the Kubernetes API. The Kubernetes API has called the webhook defined in the CRD, which has been forwarded to the local instance on my, my computer here. And I can step through this and, uh, and do everything that you would, you would like to do around that. So um, that side of things, I think is looking really good. Uh, we have, as I say, the, the sort of the, the tests. So everything's in the, the unit tests, um, sorry, in the make file. You can build, run functional tests, run the unit tests. Uh, yeah, everything's there and it's getting there. So, so that's, that's a kind of a quick update on, on that. I'm pretty, pretty happy where that's at. It's pretty good now. I managed to put the the health endpoints and the ready endpoints in, which I will expose to um, to people. I've been doing some work on the console as a side of things to do the dog fooding, and that's been working really good. And the next side of the dog food is I'm going to implement the um, some of the stuff around the the Istio adapter, which which actually will be really um, really easy to to implement because literally all you have to do is implement the methods that you are interested in. And just in case anybody's not seen that before, if I can find the right, here's a, an example, logging implementation. So you don't have to worry about anything around the controller. You don't need to worry about like the, the sort of hierarchy that children objects don't exist. The controller will deal with all of that. As a consumer, all you handle are the upserts and the delete events which you you receive and then you can execute whatever logic you need to do so it's um it's pretty rapid to to be able to to, to use this and yeah that's that's where i'm at istio next time i'll show you and thanks Nick. um and just to like kind of anybody who's not involved in the istio adapter or you know is new or hasn't seen some of this just to kind of add some more color to this whole thing um i was really excited to get a code walkthrough from nick um him and i went through kind of like the pros and cons of updating the istio adapter as it is today versus like using this um smi controller sdk and we kind of thought it was like really awesome to kind of just switch over and use this controller sdk it's in a good place it essentially does what we needed to do. So this SDK basically watches the um, SMI resources and um, allows us to kind of like implement whatever business logic we have on our end um, without having to deal with all the uh, setting up all of the SMI configuration um, that we need to actually like watch all those resources and do something on them. And that's essentially what the Istio controller is doing as well. So it's just, or the Istio adapter is doing as well is just, it's watching SMI resources and then building like an Istio virtual service or whatever the Istio equivalent of, uh, you know, that functionality is, it's just building the resource for that. So I'm super excited. I'm sorry, I was gonna say, I'm super excited about the conversion webhook because I'm hoping that that's really gonna save people a lot of maintenance as the spec evolves because you can depend on a, on a base level and taking your advice, Michelle, I think you're right. We should depend on like um, not V1 alpha because that's relatively immature. I think V1 alpha two or, or even three would probably be a better choice, but it, it's, it doesn't matter too much. Um, yeah, I mean, from an OSM perspective, we're really excited about um, the conversion webhooks and we can actually go ahead and we're, we're planning our next release cycle and stuff. And we've kind of talked about how we want uh, the upgrade story to be smoother in terms of SMI resources and stuff. So we can definitely help out there too. Um, awesome. Yeah. The, the, other, um, the other thing which I think just to add on that is that I, I did, um, I am using the V1 spec of the, the, the custom resource APIs, not the beta, which um, the current Go SDK is using. And the rationale behind that is, I hope that we're, you know, like, I think that's API 16 or something where, where that was compatibility was introduced. You get so much better benefit around the validation side, the fact that you can define 
like a, a custom validation for, for every version of the spec. And that might be another topic to table about whether we, we go and upgrade the, the existing Go SDK and the CRDs that we've produced there and maybe start moving those to V1. That's a separate issue. Yes, we need to work on that. Um, I'll take a note of that or Michael can take a note of that. That'd be great. Um, all right, so let's uh, move into, uh, actually, I want to give a minute. Does anybody have any other comments uh, around the stuff that Nick is working on? Okay. Um, thank you, Nick. Uh, okay, so the next item we have is um, Bridget is putting out a last call to edit the SMI CNCF annual review. So if you gave a talk or did a blog post on SMI or saw something cool about SMI, this is kind of our yearly report card to the TOC and to the rest of the CNCF community around like things we've done and accomplishment, accomplishments we've had. So um, please throw that in there. Um, we also have a, uh, the next agenda item is around spec evolution plans. Um, so getting APIs to beta and stable. Um, we have had our APIs kind of in alpha for a while. Um, implementations have implemented it. I'm kind of wondering, um, you know, we, we kind of need a roadmap. We tried to do this before, uh, but we need to have a plan for how to get our APIs to beta and stable. Um, are there, are there uh, parts of traffic split and traffic access and traffic metrics that we want to change and add features to, or do we feel like it's in a good place and we can, you know, start moving into beta? Um, and then I guess we, we can still add features after, after it's, you know, V1 or whatever it is. We just kind of need to get it to some sort of a stable place where we know that conversion webhooks will work and we won't be changing fields all the time, things like that. Nick, you wanna talk about that? Well, I, all I wanted to, to make a suggestion is, why don't, well, okay, I'll, I'll make it as a suggestion. Would it make sense that maybe what we do is make a big push in the same way as when SMI was originally founded and we we say, look, let's, let's do a big push and add a bunch of features before a beta one, because I'd love to see things like retries, circuit breaking, um, you know, connection level timeouts and things like that supported by the various um, spec elements, if, if that makes, if that makes sense, because I, I think they're really important. Yeah, how do we, um, like, it's nice that the APIs have been in alpha because people can implement them and then kind of give us feedback on how it's going. <clears throat> and I have feature requests too, like um, should we add TCP route uh, attributes to um, traffic splitting and things like that. But do we want to like make a big push and get those features in before they've been implemented by people and then call that beta? Or do we want um, to get those features in and have them tested and have that be alpha and then move to beta? Or, or is there a world in which we can just call what we have beta because um, because it is pretty well tested in uh, different environments and different implementations. And then can we add more features to those resources later? So, Does anybody have any thoughts around that? Um, does anybody have any thoughts around compatibility for each integration? I'm not entirely sure what that bullet point is. I forgot to ask uh, Bridget. <laughs> Nick, do you have a thought about that? Uh, no, I don't have. I don't have much much thoughts. I think the there's there's definitely a couple of bits and pieces that um, I'd I'd love to see um, love to see in the spec and and be more than happy to help push this forward. But I think you got a really valid point that what we have right now works really well. And a lot of people have been using it. So should it just be promoted and then we can always run another beta, right? Yeah. Um, if any, anyway, let's just open an issue on that and talk about it async and then come back. Um, I'll let Bridget lead that conversation next time. Uh, and we can maybe, I'll, maybe I can work with Bridget on a proposal and we can push that through or not. Compatibility for integration, I, is that 
I wonder, um, maybe I'm just too close to it, but that, uh, is that SMI conformance? Or is that like um, verifying conformance of an, in, an integration's compatibility with the spec or is that? You know, I don't know, but that's that's a good point. Do y'all have an update by any chance on? Yeah, actually, that's why I skipped the last couple of times is because it was, um, we were so close on like basically a final, like more or less, uh, we, we uh, this is why I haven't joined is because last time we ended up meeting with the NGINX uh, service mesh folks um, to help, because they had missed the initial kind of um, deep dive into that conformance and they're really interested. And um, they're gung-ho to have their implementation verified and the tool is able to do it. it the problem is that their software to get access to service nginx service mesh you have to sign in a um a eula which means that like as the meshery as the tool to pull down install files and deploy the service meshes it becomes an issue for it just it, we got wrapped up in their um corporate legal system um the as a matter of fact so like a blog post is very much needed the thing the Results, the, the brief update is that the, 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 the tool works. You can go test different service meshes, conformances. Uh, we're ready for our first, or the tool is ready for its first real customer, I guess. Like the, for the first, uh, like the, the statistics are actually published on like, I think four or five service meshes on how, what percentage compatible they are with the, the current definitions of those tests. And it's like, it's like in the 40 percentage range for the tests that are there. Um, so I was, so I'll ask this, anybody want to sign up to be the first? And by the first, I mean, <clears throat> um, the goal is to empower the teams with the tool. Say, here's the tool, run it at your leisure, run it in your CI pipeline or run it ad hoc when you want to, whenever you want to verify yourself, you're empowered to do it. And then you're empowered to send your results uh, in a verified way to, to the, to a table. Can you, can you share a link to the tool so that everyone on the call and also for, for my notes <laughs> that I have a link in the notes? The other thing, Lee, is well, I'd be, I'd be happy to integrate that into the, the SDK pipeline as well, um, because I'd love to see that as a, I'm hoping that people are gonna do things like copy pasta, the, like the build files for GitHub Actions and stuff, make it easy. So if we added a stack to do the compatibility test, theoretically the reference implementation and the SDK, which is like logging controller, should be 100% compliant. So it would be, and I'd also like to integrate that on the console um, uh, the rework that I'm, I'm doing as well. So I, I'd love to play with that and maybe we talk async. Nice. That, that's great. Um, Michael, I'll, I'll drop in two links, one to the, one to the, to, to the, shit, I don't know what you, uh, the design spec for what the tests are, which actually right. needs some additional, additional input. There's a few tests, there's tests that are there today. Um, right. Did, did you say here in the chat or where, where, where do you? I'll, I'll, or um, the... I'll do it both. I'll do the chat and Google Doc. And... Cool. We have so many places where I could <laughs> just to make sure. Thank you. Um, I think I'm going to dig into the, uh, Nick's SDO uh, implementation and controller. Um, so I would be help, happy to help with uh, whatever needs to be done to make the SDO adapter also be one of the uh, customers. Really? Nice. Yeah. To be honest, I, let me digress for a second and say. <clears throat> between winter storms and pandemics and like founding small companies, I am, I am uh, man, thank goodness you guys are coming to bear on it because I'm, I'm about done. <laughs> between uh, O'Reilly chapters do and things like that. It's uh, so good. Thanks for, thanks for letting me sit on your couch. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get that. I totally feel you. <laughs> um, Okay, so uh, going forward, um, I had a topic um, about 
uh, traffic split route service, which I'll briefly give you an overview of, and then we can just have a one minute conversation on it and we can move on. Um, in the traffic split uh, part of the spec, um, it, there's like a paragraph and I have an a, a issue that links to the paragraph, but it just says that the root service should be an FQDN fully qualified domain name. So that's cool. Um, that makes sense because you want to be able to, you know, be able to have a client access foo.com and then that service, that traffic should be routed in whatever way the split has defined. Um, but then it says that later in the paragraph, it says that, uh, you know, the, the backup should be um, like, uh, actually there, there's some um, language around there that says uh, something about that if if the root service isn't there, then the standard Kubernetes configuration should work. And it's just like slightly confusing um, because it sort of couples the root service to a Kubernetes service. And I don't think that if you really think about it, that doesn't make sense because you should be able to, you know, go to foo.com or bookstore.bookstore .bookstore namespace or whatever that is. You should be able to use either or. Um, so it could be a Kubernetes service or it could not be a Kubernetes service. And I'm talking about the root service. Um, so I would just love to add like maybe a sentence or two clarifying that there is not a coupling there unless there's some background that I don't really know about. Okay, Nick is shaking his head. He's been here for a while. So Cool, sounds good. Um, so anyways, that issue is there. If y'all want to comment or anything, any comments right now? No, okay. I figured it would be pretty, pretty standard. Um, I'm going to skip the next, oh, no, not the next. Okay, the next thing is the multi-cluster federation call for feedback. So um, Michael, did you want to take that one? I, given that I'm scribing i think i will let nick do that otherwise like i can't really talk and and uh, scribe so yeah. nick you okay with with doing that thanks buddy drop me in at the last sure, you're welcome. No, <laughs> um i was just playing around with wasm in go um earlier on this afternoon and um yeah, I'm less than impressed with the, the, the state of the, the compatibility, much to my own frustration anyway, whilst I look for this. Okay, so we've been talking about off and on about um, multi-cluster for, well, for, for, it's, it's for a while. And ultimately we, we never agreed as a group whether we should take on multi-clustering specifications, um, whether we should support something external or whatever. So we, um, we, we, I started an issue, which I've just left to, to Canvas sort of feedback on for the last sort of 13 days. And um, ultimately it kind of just covers the fact that we're looking for help. And, um, and I think the general consensus is that people want to see, uh, what multi-clustering, which includes um, different mesh variants as well as different clouds and, and things like that, and, and that was always the purpose of um, of what we were we were trying to achieve with that, which is good. Um, so yeah, so there's just some comments. A um, few people have have sort of spoke about these things. I think this is an interesting one, and I didn't comment to this because uh, I do have a very specific sort of perspective that I don't, well, I'll, I'll vote my, my perspective that I don't think that we should enforce people to use a specific uh, identity federation when it comes to multi-cluster discussions. And my, my rationale behind that, which I will add to, to this is that I think that's an implementation detail and what the spec should actually do is talk about an identity conversion or something side of the, the specification. Um, the, the example cited here is around Spiffy, which I think is a great format. The problem with Spiffy is it's a very loose format. You know, Spiffy is, is if it's a URI, you're, you're pretty much good to go. But the problem with the URI, you can compose it in many different ways. You could use sort of dot notation. So I could say, um, you know, cluster dot region dot application. I could use business unit dot region dot application. 
Um, or I could use something like uh, cluster slash business unit slash application. So there's, you know, there's, there's a number of different ways that you can compose a spiffy ID. And, and actually what you probably want to be able to do with multi-clustering is be able to sort of trust a, a, a you know, a, a broader thing than just a one-to-one -one mapping. So I'd love some feedback and um, some comments on, on, on that area about how, how we could deal with that. But you know, that, that's where it is. Um, this is, as I say, it's been open 13 days. My plan is Friday, I will go back and answer some things on here, but um, next steps, I think it would be nice that we could maybe should have a little vote or something uh, on what, what we I think, think. I think Michelle's uh, suggestion to schedule a deeper dedicated call on, on that topic is, is definitely but, worth But please, um, folks uh, who haven't commented and have an opinion, please, oh, yeah. um, please, please hit that issue. I'll throw that link. Um, I apologize. I was, I was talking. I wasn't sharing my screen. Okay. And I had this. All right, thanks. Um, yeah, let's uh, do a meeting next week since we don't have an SMI community call like specifically on multi-cluster if that works and then everybody go put your opinion on that issue between now and next week. Is that, does that work? Okay, cool. I'll make sure that happens. Okay, um, last issue on the agenda is just an issue around the contributing guide. Y'all can go check that out if you're interested. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, does anybody have any last comments before we drop off? All right. Great See you next work. time. Sorry. Uh, just great work, Nick. Oh. Great implementation. Yeah, thank you, Nick. All right. Talk Very to you later. Well. Bye. Thank you. Bye now.